Portrait background removal is here in Luminar Neo's latest update 1.1. Now once you've updated Luminar Neo, you're going to find the portrait background removal within the layers. So on the right side in your tools, we'll go under layers properties and you're going to see under masking portrait background. Simply click on it to activate it and you're going to get this option to remove it. Let's click on that. Once it's done, you're going to see that it removes the background automatically. And to be really honest, it's nothing new because since the last update, we've been able to do this, but not on the base layer. You notice here that the base layer is intact and it works just fine. You're also going to notice at the bottom here, it says refine brush, and this is where you can do some tweaks. Now I want to stress that this is not a mask. This is uh, an area to refine your selection. So for example, if we had something in the background that it detected as an object, you can go into here. If we click on background, the blue represents the background. And if we wanted to take out whatever it was detecting, we could simply adjust it with the background tool. Same goes for the object selection. Let's say for some reason it was picking up, you know, this portion as the background for whatever reason, you could simply click on object here and correct that. Now we're going to click on transition. And what this does is the area between the object selection and the background selection. This area here is the transition area and it does a fairly good job, but you're going to see that it's not perfect. Like in these areas here, you still see a little bit of the green background. Now what you can do is click on transition and gently go over these areas and you see that it clears off more of the area here so that we could see the hairs individually a bit more. I'm actually going to use a smaller brush here and then we're going to hover over there and do that. So it kind of just cleans up the little areas uh, in between. Now I will say it's not perfect. I have other images that I've tried this on. So if we go over here and we want to define that area, but you see that you got to be really careful how you use this. And unfortunately with this, there's no undo button and you'd have to go back into object or background and paint those back in but I actually wouldn't correct it here. I would just go into the masking options and correct it here because at least you can paint over or erase the selections that you have made. Now, if you do other things and you go into the tool, let's say use the enhance tool as an example, you can always go back into the layers properties and back into masking portrait background, and it'll still save your, your selection, but you have to click remove again to get access to the refinement brush. So a little bit of an extra step there, but I'm sure that they'll find a better way to make this process a bit more efficient. Now, to be very honest with you, other than the fact that you can do this on the base layer, it's a little underwhelming for me, like the transition tool works okay, but we had the ability to do this already in the last update. So although I love the concept of it, I'm not one to remove the background on my portrait photos usually, unless I'm doing a thumbnail, but I'm more excited about the smaller updates that were made. For example, let's say I wanted to bring in another image here. So I'm going to bring it in and you'll notice now that the the image is keeping its aspect ratio. It's no longer stretching. Another addition to the layers were these image mapping options where you can fit it the way it is now. You can fill and stretch. In addition to that, we can now reorder the base layer any way we want. And of course you have the ability to save this as a transparent PNG file. If you export it as a PNG, it'll still preserve its transparency. Let's head over to the crop tool. One of the things with the crop tool that uh, was kind of obvious, but people didn't really know that should you use the crop tool prior to this version, you had to click on enter on your keyboard to get the crop tool to trigger, right? Which I did just then. But now you're going to notice this apply button. So if I do a slight crop here, for example, now you see this apply button. As always, check out the description below for all the smaller details and the little bug fixes that were done in this update. 
Now, if you're new to this channel and this is your first video, be sure to check out this video where I cover quite a few functions in Luminar Neo and where we reimagine two stock photos to this. Until the next video, my friends, I'll see you when I see you.